Hi, and welcome to this, our solution of literal equations and system of equations z -z 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 lesson for methods three and four here in Australia and possibly around the world. Those of you who are following along and know that I am actually doing these lessons to help the world, but predominantly the students I currently teach, are going to be knowing that this here is just information for the questions I'm going to ask them to do. But as is normal, let's zip to my recap. What is a literal equation? Well, I looked it up and I found out a little... What is a literal equation? Well, the good news is I looked up on Dr. Google a definition and it stated a literal equation is one where you have an equation for X, where the coefficients and the constants are all pro numerals. What does that mean? Well, long story short, there are some examples. X squared minus AX plus A or X cubed plus 2AX squared minus 3A squared X. If I try and solve these, and how would I know that they're going to be able to be solved because they're all equal to zero? Then what I know is that I'm not actually going to end up with an answer that goes X equals 4 or X equals 7. I'm going to end up with answers with X is equal to something to do with the letter A probably in this situation, all right? So there's no specific numeral answer. Our answer is going to be ending up in terms of another letter. So the question is, how do we actually solve literal equations? Well, the great thing with these are you are going to be asked to rearrange for the value of x and then solve in exactly the same way as you've been doing previously. I really can't emphasize enough the fact that even though equations don't have numbers in them, they can still be solved. They'll look weird. Don't get me wrong. And methods at some point will ask you to start interpreting this, but not yet. But the point of it is you just solve them in exactly the same way as we've been doing. So we already have learned about the quadratic formula, T method, cross method, completing the square, right? These are predominantly for quadratics. Then we've got polynomial division, synthetic division. All of these are helping us find solutions to equations. So what best way to actually look at this than to actually have some examples? Kx squared plus x plus k equals zero. Right, looking at this, it's obviously a quadratic. So we're going to need to look at one of the ways of... So looking at this, it's obviously a quadratic. We need to find a way of solving this using some sort of quadratic method. Well, T method. Let me see. If I try the T method, let's do K times K, which gives me K squared. Do I know what the factors of K squared are? No, that's not actually going to help me. So the T method is no good to me. What about completing the square? Well, I'm going to end up with moving K outside my brackets, which gives me X squared plus x on k plus 1 equals 0. Yeah, I could probably complete that square, but it would be gross, so possibly not. Um, cross method is just a different way of T method, so I'm actually going to go and use the quadratic equation. In this situation, that tends to make sense. So using our quadratic equation, we know that x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Our value of a is equal to k, our value of b is 1, and our value of c also happens to be k. So let's substitute these values in. x is equal to minus 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4 times k times k, all over 2 times k. All right, so simplifying this, we get x is equal to minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 4k squared, all over 2k. But the question is, what values of k are now possible because not all values of k are going to be possible. We need to think about this stuff with methods. So this is only sort of part of our answer. We need to then say, well, are the values of k that aren't possible? Automatically looking at the bottom here, zero is not going to be possible. So k can't be zero at any point in that equation. But are there others? Well, yes. This square root sign here suggests that 1 minus 4k squared would have to be greater than or equal to 0. So I'm going to take away 1 from both sides. Minus 4k squared is going to be greater than or equal to... I'm going to take away 1 from both sides, which gives me minus 4k squared is greater than or equal to negative 1. And now I'm going to multiply through by negative 1, which means my inequality sign changes, which gives me my 4k squared has got to be less than or equal to 1. So k squared is less than an e or equal to a quarter. Right, what does that actually mean? Well, if we look at our graph now, k squared is less than or equal to a quarter. means we have a solution here at negative a half, and we have a solution here at a half. And if we were to draw our quadratic, 
and look at the part of the inequality that less than or equal to means we want under the graph. Okay, so we want under the graph, and in which case we're looking at this section here. So that would suggest to me that, and just because k is less than or equal to plus or minus a half, so that's the bit we have to be careful of. All right, uh, makes me nervous writing it that way, but. What we can now state is that this is true for x values that are in the set of minus a half to a half, but not including zero. All right, so that there are the values of k, oops, and that should say k, not x, my apologies, k to fall between the values of negative and a half, but not zero. All right, so that's the first one. That actually looked quite complicated. Second example, I think, is a lot, lot easier. Again, it's a cubic. But what I also notice is that there's an x in every single term. So I'm actually going to take x out as a factor, which gives me x squared minus 7ax plus 12a squared equals zero. So before I even know, I've got one of my solutions that x is equal to zero. What about this? Well, it's a quadratic. So let's see, how can I solve it? Well, I'm going to try the t method. And the only thing I'm going to look at is the number here and the number here. So 1 and 12 gives me 12, and I'm looking at minus 7. So minus 3 and minus 4. So if we're looking at minus 12a squared, then minus 3a and minus 4a seems to fit. So I'm now going to split that up into x, x minus 3a, x minus 4a, becomes equal to zero. So that's factorized that fully, which means, as I've said earlier, that x is equal to zero, or x is equal to 3a, or x is equal to 4a. And considering, are there any values that x can't be? No, there's no divisors by x. It doesn't seem to be anything in there that suggests x is limited in any way. So all of those values are possible. And then the last one, which is possibly the easiest one, we want to get x on its own. Remember, we're solving for x. So what do we get? We get x to the power of a cubed equals b on a. One cubed is the same as finding the cube root of b on a. So how do we now get rid of a cube root? We cube everything, so we get b on a cubed. And ladies and gentlemen, there was my last answer. Now, you may remember way back to year 10 11 when you needed to solve simultaneous equations. And if we remember anything, we remember that those equations can be written in intercept form. Intercept form means that actually it's written in a nice way to use the fact that that's x equals zero and that's y equals zero to find two points and then draw my straight line. All right, so, and the reason we solve simultaneous equations is because we're trying to find a solution. But a solution to what? Well, we've already met a number of times that we can actually solve simultaneous equations in four different ways graphically. And by that, I mean literally sitting there and plotting at the points by substitution. All right, that's by rearranging one of the equations to make it either x equals or y equals and then substituting the other. By elimination, which is the one that people tend to find the most complicated. But once you've done like 100 of them, life is easier or probably more simply by using the cats. Whichever way you solve them, you need to remember you are trying to find a point of intersection. That's the whole point. These are two straight lines which cross and the solution is otherwise known as the crossing point or as we like to call it in maths, the point of intersection. Now, funnily enough, when we're doing the point of intersection, what we're really doing is we're taking this equations here and we're using the idea of substitution. Which is weird because when we teach this stuff, we tend to try and get people to do elimination over and over again because substitution can become quite disgusting, particularly if you have fractions and stuff. But point of intersection is substitution. No two ways about it, end of. And that's what we're gonna use for the rest of this exercise. Now we can be given some pretty complex questions that ask for points of intersection and we can use the methods as above. We certainly wouldn't choose to do it by hand and we certainly, certainly would where we can use our CAS, all right? But we still have to show some form of working out in an exam. So here's an example. Find the points of intersection of the circle with that equation and that is the equation of a circle. X squared plus Y squared equals R squared is the equation of a circle and that line. 
All right, so look, I've drawn it graphically, and just as a test, we can see that we're looking for two solutions to be negative 2, 1 and negative 1, 2. But how do we do this algebraically? Well, we know that at the point of intersection, we can see that both the x and the y values are the same in both equations. So we can use substitution. We know that this y value and this y value will be identical at those points of intersection. So I can say x squared plus y squared equals 5. And because I know that y is equal to x plus 3, I can take all of this and put it in place of that y there which is effectively what we've done here. Now, a word of warning, when you're replacing one letter with more than one, put it in brackets, or you're gonna make some horrible, horrible calculation errors, and ultimately you won't get the right answer. So there we go, right? So now we have x squared plus x plus three squared equals five. I'm gonna square this out, and remember, x plus three squared is the same as x plus three times x plus three which gives me x squared plus 6x plus 9. Please, please do not think it's just x squared plus 9. That terrifies me. All right, so we get x squared plus x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 5. What are we going to do now? Add those two together. Give me 2x squared. Take away 5 from both sides. Give me plus 4 is equal to 0. Now, I can see each of those are divisible by 2. So I'm going to divide. Oh, don't know what happened there with my screen. Divide both sides by 2 to give me, uh, divide both sides. I'm going to divide every single term by 2. x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0. I'm going to do my t method for 2, which is 1 and 2. And so I get x squared plus x plus 2x plus 2 equals 0. Factorize pairs. x, x plus 1 plus 2, x plus 1 equals 0. And as such, I get x plus 1, x plus 2 equals 0, or x is equal to minus 1, or x is equal to minus 2. Now that's good, because x is equal to minus 1, yes, and x is equal to minus 2. But remember, you are being asked for solutions. And as you need to do solutions, you've got to write your answer in terms of coordinates. So you know that x is equal to minus 1, and you know that x is equal to minus 2. Now, again, lots of people seem to overcomplicate this and use really random, the, generally speaking, the hardest equation. But remember, at those points, x squared plus y squared equals 5, and y is equal to x plus 3, both equations work. So I would have always used the easiest one. So what do we get? So in this situation, y is equal to 2, and in this situation, y is equal to 1. So the coordinate positions were minus 1, comma 2, and minus 2, comma 1. Minus 1, comma 2, and minus 2, comma 1. Happy, happy, smiley, smiley. All right, that's it for this lesson. Finding the intersections of points and solving literal equations. Practice makes perfect. Good luck. I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi, and thanks very much for watching this, another video by me, The Maths Guru. If you would like to see more videos, why not subscribe and get regular updates? Otherwise, hey, click on the left and watch our next video. Okay, thanks very much. Have a good day.